Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again with yet another Fate Commander from the Precon decks from Bloomborough that I've taken away and built my own version of. And this one, Bello, has been literally driving me mad for about a week now. Um, firstly, I misread it and missed out the Man of Value 4 claws in the text over here. Um, yep, so I had it all built with blood tokens, treasure tokens, and clue tokens, and when I play tested it, I realised. The, yeah, they're not matter value four, so they don't become four four creatures. My bad. So stripped all the deck out, started again, and then second time I tried to record this year, I went through and realised I'd left a whole load of things in. I thought I'd taken out when I reduced it, and I just like nope, that's it. So I deleted the whole deck from MTGO, rebuilt it, and that's where we are now. But Bello, as you've gathered, um, for each equipment and uh, sorry, for each non. Well, for basically each artifact that isn't equipment and each charmer that isn't an aura, um, it becomes a 4 4 elemental creature during your turn uh, with indestructible and haste. And when it smacks someone in the head, um, you get to draw a card, which is fantastic for a 3 3 for 3 mana. Got no issue with that, just I need to learn to read. But this is what I've come up with, so bear with me, I think I've got it right now. So, starting at the beginning. Birds of Paradise and Dockside Extortionist to give us the need ramp we need, you know. Birds for the one drop. We could have played an elf here, but birds is I think birds is slightly better in this deck because you need the red mana. Um Dockside, because we're in a red deck, and I will always play Dockside Extortionist if I get the opportunity to in a red deck. You all know this by now with a bit of luck. Um next one, the Cobra appears. Um we have lands, we drop lands, we need to make extra mana, we need to make a lot of mana for this deck to work, so Cobra does it. And then we jump. Um they're the cheap three creatures in the deck, everything above that is four or more, and there are reasons. The familiar is here because it cuts the cost down of our um, artifacts that are coming up shortly, because and our um, yeah, basically our artifacts in this deck because we do need to be four, but it does become a four four elemental during our turn when Bellows in play, so I know that for a fact. So four four for four in the air of flying, yeah, that's pretty good. Nylea's here, um, again another one that becomes a 4-4 but gives everything trample which is important. Solemn Sim for ramping in card draw eventually. Stone Retrieval Unit for the power token it provides uh, as well as being a 4-4 body for 4 with Bellow in play. Root Wire Amalgam I left in. Um, I was playing around with the prototype creatures and hmm, wasn't that keen on them. This one however I was okay with. Um, it's quite nice. If you have this for two mana, play this, it becomes a 4 4 with Bellow in play, and then we can sacrifice it for five mana and create an XX colorless golem artifact creature token where X is three times the root power. Now, do you have a little problem um, in that it becomes a 4 4 again with Bellow, but hmm, if Bellow's out of play, this and you've got this token around, um, yeah, that could be quite useful. Roxana, Starfall, Savant is also here just to give some meteorite tokens to drop into play. Um, yes, they don't have an artif yes, they don't have a mana value, but they do do two damage and do tap for colour and double up on our mana production from our tokens. So we're not going to complain with Roxana coming into play. Xenagos, God of Revels, um, yeah. It's just Xenagos basically who becomes a 4 4 elemental creature and then um, gives it a beginning of combat on your turn. Another target creature you control gains haste and gets plus X plus X until the end of turn. We all know what Xenagos does, we've seen enough. Kodoma of these tree to drop in some extra pair, um, permanents when we need to. And Sarith the Great Worm, just anyone, whenever a land enters a battlefield, and it's not just on your side, it's on anybody's side, um, get a Power Stone token. That helps, we've got a lot of artifacts coming in this deck, we need to build them up. Um, one of the great things we have got, however, is Bosch the Iron Golem. Um, I haven't played Bosch for a long time, decided to drop him into this deck, and yeah, he works out quite well towards the end game if we need him to, especially if we've generated a few Power Stone tokens, or you know, at least yeah, one Meteorite from Roxanne. Um, yeah, interesting. Spells wise, uh, Fast Seek, Nature's Law, Rampant Growth, 3 Visits, Cultivate, Search for Tomorrow. Ranger's Path, Sky Shroud Claim, give us all the ramp we need, and then Season of the Bold, because I just like having something that has pause in the deck. Um, this one will be a case of exile the top four cards of our library for two pause and have a tap treasure token from my point of view. Um, I don't see the point in doing whatever till the end of your next turn, whenever you cast a spell, you deal two damage drops to one target creature in Commander. Seems a bit, hmm probably has a place in some of the other decks where you're doubling up on damage and things. We do have a couple in here, but 
I think that needs to be in a dedicated damage dealing deck, so yeah, that might work. But for us in this deck, one treasure token, four cards, thank you very much. And here we go, here's the artifacts. We have some ramp, let's start with the ramp, we get out of the way. Mana Crypt, Tantalite, Talisman, Mana Vault, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Mindstone, Thought Vessel. We've had them all in, we need a lot of ramp in this deck to make it work, and this seemed good enough number to me. After that, we go into four drop land because obviously we want to make sure our mana, our non us equipment artifacts are all mana value form also become these lovely indestructible elementals in our turn. So, Etherworks Marvels here. Hopefully, we, you know, if things get removed, we get a bit more energy and then get to get something else into play for free. Ezekiel's Chariot. Um, when we can attack with it, we can copy target token you control, so we can create, copy our cat tokens. Um, Hedron Archive for a ramp and card draw and a 4 4. Sisay's Ring for a ramp, for and Diamond Mode for ramp. Unwinding Clock so we can untap everything um, and then make sure we can use some more the games. Really great with the chariot because we can just untap the chariot after we attack with it and then crew it with our um, lovely cat tokens if we need to block at some stage. Coat of Arms because they are all elementals and it does give you quite a big alpha strike. Yes, it's dangerous. Yes, I know it's, everyone gets a benefit from it, um, but should work, I think. Doors of Duodin come in for the scry ability. We haven't really got any dwarves or elves in the deck, so yeah. But um, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> Forsaken Monument um, means all our colourless creatures, which all our artifacts are, because you know it's greater than 4 4 elemental creature, doesn't say it's got colour, so it should be colourless with all our artifacts, get plus 2 plus 2. Tapping things for colourless mana gives an extra one, and casting colourless spells gains us 2 life, which could be helpful in this deck. Gilded Lotus for the mana ramp and the size of the creature. I'm not going to talk about it, all going to be 4 4, so it's just the card, sorry. Mine's our diamond for the card draw if we can. Tamiyo's journal for the clue tokens to go and find things if we need to. Transmutation font gives us food tokens to keep us alive. Vence's journal just makes sure we have no maximum hand size and life gain. Bootleg is stash for extra treasures. Chimili the inner sun just to do the whole let's discover and see what we hit. Eternity vessel lets us chart reset our life total if we need to. Um, I can do, you could have done, I could have gone down a slight proliferate theme with this to build up the number of X um, counters on it, but didn't bother. Immortal Sun shuts down all the planeswalkers, pumps our creatures, makes our spells cheaper to cost and an extra card draw. Acroma's Memorial means all our um, elementals go to the air and cause people all into problems. Dark Steel Forge means all our things become indestructible, and Portal to Phyrexia means we clear the board. We do have some 4-drop um, enchantments in the deck as well. Defense of the Heart, because we probably will not have many creatures um, at the beginning of our upkeep until Bello turns up. And so we can go and get rid of this and find some decent ones. You know, first thing, yeah, what I would go and find would probably be, um, if there's a lot of artifacts in play, go and find Dockside. And then I'll probably go and grab either Roxanne or Worm, just so I can start doing my ramp so I can cast my artifacts, just so we're clear. Um, Nature's Will, just to get to untap all our lands and tap all their lands. Berserker's Onslaught gives all our attacking things double strike. Along with the Trample from Nylea, makes a very nice attacking force and true, very truly. Glorious Sunrise also does plus one, plus one and Trample if we needed to. Gratuitous Violence, um, if it deals combat damage to a creature or player, it deals double that damage. That's our creatures, it's not symmetrical, it doesn't go across the board, it's just purely our creatures for a change. Sight of the Scale Lord pumps all our creatures up because everything will have a toughness fall, so they get plus two, plus two in vigilance. And then unnatural growth makes sure you get your triggers in the right order and stack them properly, and you give your friends a complete nightmare. Fari and Massivation triples up the damage. Sunbird's Invocation just is kind of a cascady type thing in my mind. I know it's not, but it is in my mind. Virtuous Strength, we have a lot of basics in the deck, and it made sense to have this in here so we can triple up our mana production so we can get things out. And then finally, um, sandworm convergence creatures without flying can't attack you or planeswalkers you control and at the beginning of our end step we get to have a 5-5 five, five green worm creature token which I thought was quite a nice little blocker and yeah it's not too sad a little bit expensive at 8 mana but we'll get there lands wise um, as I mentioned 9 forests 9 mountains and then all the other red green lands you can think of having in a deck are here um, 
Fable Passage, just so I can go and get them out. We have got the Temple of the False God here. We have got Reliquary Tower here. I am concerned about how to try and get these four mana, four casting cost artifact, or four plus artifacts and um, enchantments in a place. So I had to go with them to make sure I wasn't discarding them. But yeah, it's better now. A lot better now I've read cards properly. But that's my take on Bella. So, yeah. I'm still not 100% sure I've built it correctly, but if I haven't, let me know in the comments down below. Um, we can work things out from there, I can change it around a bit. Um, I'm looking forward to playing on stream. I'll be playing on a stream this week, so yeah, there's a link down below to Twitch. Um, just like to take the opportunity now, I'll finish talking about the deck, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave a comment down below if you think there's anything I've missed, and thank you to everybody who's helped me get with my 500 target. Obviously, the thousand is the next big one, but not. Yeah, not pushing out. I'm just glad I made this for 500. I'll put in for it. We'll see what happens. And I'd like to say thank you once more to everyone who subscribed. It's really cheered me up this week. Um, but yeah, that's fantastic. So I'm out of here. Be back tomorrow with our last one, Face Commanders, and then something special on Thursday. So for now, take care. See you soon. Bye.